what's happening with Tim Pawlenty? Uh, this guy is, you know, painting a picture as if he's leaving the state of Minnesota in a pretty financially stable position. I mean, if you listen to his interview with Matt Lauer, if you uh, see some of the comments that he's come out with, you, you'd think that uh, life is good in Minnesota when it comes to finances. I understand <laughs> I understand you have a different take. What is it? Well, that's the reason I'm, I'm speaking out is, that first of all, and it sounds a bit cornball, but I really believe that the media has to do a good job of scrutinizing every single person who runs for the presidency, regardless of party and regardless of political viewpoints. Uh, Tim Plenty has left Minnesota in probably its worst financial mess in history. Uh, today, the legislature will end at midnight, deadlocked, unable to resolve a $5.1 billion deficit that was left behind by Governor Plenty. And that, so we'll go into special session, and there's a possibility of a government shutdown. Uh, has that ever uh, even been talked about before in Minnesota, about a government shutdown? I can't recall. Uh, it, 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 I don't want to say a definite no, but I, 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 I can't recall that. There, there have always been provisions to keep government open. Uh, but I can't recall a, a crisis as serious as this one appears to be. The Republicans, under no circumstances, or so they say, uh, will increase taxes. Uh, Governor Dayton has held firm that he's compromised on the revenue side, and he feels he's at the 50-yard line and would like the Republicans to meet him there if there's to a, you know, if a solution is to come about. What, what can you tell us about inflating property taxes on Tim Pawlenty's watch? Yeah, well, the analogy I used was President Obama today announces that he's cutting out federal funding for, for highways. Well, that gives him a lot of good sound bites. No question about it. People say, gee, there's a real budget cutter. The problem is the highways still exist. They still require maintenance. They still require money. All that happens is that that burden, that financial burden, will shift to the state. Uh, and so their budgets will balloon as a result of that action. The costs don't disappear. When you look at the property tax increases under plenty, they're the biggest we've had in history by far. Here's uh, plenty this morning. Here it is country needs new leadership, and we've got to get this economy moving again. President Obama, unfortunately, doesn't have the courage to look the American people in the eye and tell them the tough truth, the things that we're going to need to do to get our spending under control. What do you make of that? Well, he did exactly the opposite. If you look at the numbers in Minnesota, Minnesota underperformed the national average in, in the GDP, economic growth. We underperformed the national average in the growth of jobs. But if you look at the amount of borrowing, that the governor utilized to, quote, balance his budget. It is astounding. Uh, and, and Obama can say that he balanced his budget, too. And the issue the Republicans take issue with is the amount of borrowing. Well, the same applies to Governor Plenty. You cannot borrow your way to financial success, but that's precisely what Governor Plenty did. And in the process, by the way, Minnesota lost its top-level credit rating. Well, Moody's uh, uh, lowered Minnesota's bond rating. Right. H how how uh, serious is that, in your opinion? Well, that's very serious. I, I, when we got the AAA bond rating back, roughly 92, 93, somewhere in there, we estimated that the savings, if I recall right, and it's a bit foggy, was about a hundred million dollars over the life of a certain amount of money, a certain amount of bonds. Uh, it's a significant thing. But the second thing is. From a business perspective, they would much prefer to do business in a state that has a triple-A bond rating rather than a state that has just lost its bond rating. And is lurching, by the way, we have been lurching from deficit to deficit from 2003 on. And you may recall from 2003 to 2007, those were good economic years. States were in good financial shape, as was the country. So he, and he keeps saying, well, it's all due to the recession. That's not true. We what were is, in deficits all during the so-called good financial years, and the reason was there was an unwillingness to truly balance the budget. And so they engaged in a lot of temporary borrowing. And we're boy, visit does that get you into trouble. Yes, it does. Former Minnesota Governor Arne Carlson with us here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. Mr. Carlson, uh, a Republican who did vote for Tim Pawlenty your first time, correct? That's correct. That's, uh, uh, 
exactly right. And I appointed his wife to the bench, so it's not personal. But I do sincerely believe that the person who occupies the office of the White House should represent our best and our brightest, not necessarily its most ambitious. Uh, that's a heck of a... He's a very ambitious guy. Very and, but, much so. But he's not very bright? I No, I think he's very bright. But I do think he banked on the fact that the national media would not come to Minnesota and scrutinize his actual record. I can tell you how this got started. We were sitting in a group of people, and I asked people, what do you know about Huckabee as governor of Arkansas? And we all kind of joked. And not one of us could come up with any knowledge whatsoever on what Huckabee did as governor of Arkansas, be it positive or negative. We knew nothing. And yet he had been a lead Republican candidate. Yeah. Everybody knew that he lost a massive amount of weight. Uh, I think his state was 49th in education, too. It may well have been. Speaking of which, what happened to education, in your opinion, in Minnesota, public education, on Tim Pawlenty's watch? Well, I think it's fair to say that every governor, Democrat or Republican, has always felt that they were, quote, the education governors. And they could always look back on something and say, that positive move is something I did. Uh, I think you're hard put to look back on the state of Minnesota for the past eight years and see anything other than pushing uh, the cost of K-12 through education from the state res- financial responsibility to local. And that's one of the reasons the property taxes shot up the way they did. Uh, but I can't think of much in the way of innovation. What about health care for the elderly in the state of Minnesota? Well, we, we developed on a bipartisan basis what is known as Minnesota Care which was designed to use a pooled approach for uh, entrepreneurs, people that, that were running small businesses, farmers, students, the uninsured, etc. And that was a remarkable success, and we imposed a 2% provider fee to fund it. Governor Plenty used the resources of that fund to, quote, balance his budget. I think he borrowed about $400 million from that fund and that has caused that fund serious financial problems. So, <laughs> this, it's almost kind of like Badger Care in 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 Wisconsin that we've heard yeah. so much about. Okay, so Min Care was for farmers, small businesses, students, and anybody that was uninsured. Our our prime focus throughout was the single mother that was on welfare. Sure. And so we reformed the welfare system. And we were able to get a significant number into the workforce. And we made the deal that they could still retain health care through Minnesota Care. And that was an absolute boon. It was very, very successful. If if government can be utilized to extend a hand to help people, it's amazing how how helpful that is. And by the way, long term, it becomes very cost effective. What, uh, how would you describe uh, Tim Pawlenty as far as uh, someone who navigates through retail politics, the one-on-one, the small groups. I think he's very good. I think he's very persuasive. Uh, I think he's got a lot of charm. I think he's got a lot going for him. The, the real dilemma is putting public policy through what filter? Through the filter of what's good for the people of Minnesota or the filter of what's good for the National Republican Party and how they're going to view your candidacy for national office. Unfortunately, for the bulk of the plenty years, it was always through the filter of the Republican Party. For instance, as a legislator, when our administration was uh, was pushing for gay rights, Tim Plenty supported us. He voted for the gay rights bill. The, <coughs> then, as a candidate <coughs> for the presidency, he renounces that vote. You uh, you say it's not personal. Uh, right. There there are very few. I don't think we can count them on one hand. A number of former uh, public servants that would come out and say the kinds of things that you were saying about this candidate or any candidate? Well, Uh, I think one big exception would be Harry Truman. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. No, I think, and I think, Ed, you're raising the right question. We get into this issue of loyalty. Well, the real issue is to whom should we be loyal? I really believe that when you serve the people of Minnesota, you're loyal to the people of Minnesota, not to your party. When you go for national office, you're loyal to the well-being of the national interest, not to your party. President Obama is president not of the Democratic Party, but of the United States. 